Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I posted anything. I've been doing quite a few videos for the dealership instead. Uh, you can head over there and check out the videos that I've done for them. But I just wanted to go over um, Apple CarPlay. I'm sitting in a 2018 Honda Accord. Uh, I just picked this one because I particularly like it. I think they're super fun um, and the technology is great. I uh, wanted to cover Apple CarPlay, how it works, and why you don't really need a car with navigation anymore since Apple CarPlay is standard in so many vehicles, including Honda, uh, for, the for the most part. Uh, you don't need navigation, and I believe, uh, I'll show you why I think Apple CarPlay is better, uh, as a matter of fact, than the navigation um, in most cases for anybody. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, you're gonna have Apple CarPlay in pretty much every current 2018 Honda model. Uh, some of the models you have to get the higher trim level to get it. Some of them it's standard throughout, uh, but let's check it out. I'll go over all the features and the pros and cons and why I think it's better. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment down below uh, about what features you like in Apple CarPlay. Thanks guys, have a great day. All right, so I've got my USB cord plugged in down there right where the phone logo is on the USB port and I've got it plugged into my phone right here. Uh, so on this screen right here, it's going to just pop up and you're going to have this little warning. You're just going to hit enable right here, pass through that and then all of a sudden this is going to light up right here, uh, green. You have to go down here and, and hit enable on your phone and it's going to kind of take over and just say Apple CarPlay on your phone right there and it's just going to kind of gray out and then hit enable for Honda Link Assist. You know, it says in the event of a collision, the vehicle can automatically attempt to contact emergency services using the connected phone. Sure, let's hit enable. And now, uh, it actually won't light up green anymore. It will light up white on the newer versions. So we're gonna click Apple CarPlay. And it's gonna pull up a screen here that looks just like an iPhone. You're gonna have a lot of your main apps that you would see on your phone. For example, phone, Maps, Messages, Now Playing, Pandora, Audible, Podcast, and Honda. That's on the first screen. On the second screen, you're going to have a lot of your other audio apps that you could download on your phone. Uh, for example, I just have Spotify. So if we just click this icon right here, it'll pull it right up. It's going to mirror everything from your phone, all the apps that are compatible. Not everything works. Um, a lot of people ask if you can use Waze or YouTube or other apps. I have seen uh, a few people on YouTube uh, jailbreak their phone, download certain apps to where you can you know, have Waze and YouTube and stuff pop up right here. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna jailbreak my phone. Uh, there's other videos that will show you how to do that. Uh, to do it the right way and not mess up your car and not mess up your phone, just leave it like this and use what comes with and what's compatible with Apple CarPlay. Uh, what's nice is that if you click Audible, it'll just pull up your audiobooks from your phone. You can hit the back button here or the home button to get back. Uh, then you can go to your like your podcast, your maps. So one important thing to really recognize is that it uses iMaps automatically. It won't pull up Google Maps or Waze. Uh, that's one of the, I would say, downsides to it because a lot of people like Waze and Google Maps. Uh, but what's cool about iMaps is that it does pull up your most recent destinations. Um, if you hit the destinations button here, it'll pull up where you were recently. If you have your location services on, on your phone, which I do not, it'll just pinpoint your location. And if you have your home address saved, uh, it will just bring that up automatically right here. So one of the common problems you're gonna run into um, if you don't have your location services on, and I get people asking me this all the time, uh, they'll use the voice activation like this Go to the nearest Target. The closest one I found is Target on Woodstock Square Avenue. Let me know if you want more information. So what happens is if you have your location services turned off, it's not going to work properly. So I'm going to show you how to change that. So we're going to go down here to our phone. And we're going to hit settings. And then I'm going to go through my settings here. It's going to bring you to location services. You're going to go down and find um, your iMaps. And you're going to change that to while using the app. Now that's going to work. We can go back out of here. So we've got location services turned on. It should be working properly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the voice control on our steering wheel. We're going to hold it down, use Siri, and go somewhere just by voice. Go to the nearest target. The nearest one I found is Target on Woodstock Square Avenue. 
Awesome. So we're going to click go. And it's going to bring us... Starting route to target. Right to that target. Proceed to Castlewood Drive, then turn left onto Cherokee Trail. Perfect. So you have turn-by-turn uh, voice-guided turn, voice, guard, vo voice guided directions. Um, it's a little bit better than navigation, in my opinion, because number one, you don't have to pay for updates for your navigation system at the dealership. Uh, as long as your phone is up to date, your navigation is going to be up to date. Um, you can use Siri with your phone to tell it where to go, who to call, or who to send a text message to. So it's a little bit more up to date than the, um, let's all admit, the old Honda systems that were out of date and the navigations were just completely terrible to use. And the voice uh, guided navigation with most manufacturers in Honda don't recognize any voice. You have to turn the air conditioning down and they just don't respond well. So that's one of the better reasons why you would want to get Apple CarPlay's for the navigation purposes alone. Uh, not to mention it's going to save you thousands of dollars uh, when buying a car so you don't have to get navigation. So let's just say I don't want to go to this destination, I want to go somewhere else. I'm just going to click on the map and I'm going to hit overview to get my turn by turn directions or I'm going to hit end right here. It's going to bring me back to the main map, it's going to show me my location right there and then I can hit this little white button right here just like you're on an iPhone to bring you back to the main screen. You're going to have your text messages. To whom should I send your message? Text my wife. What do you want to say? Doing a YouTube video, checking out Apple CarPlay. Your message to my wife ring says, doing a YouTube video, checking out Apple CarPlay. Ready to send it? Send it. Okay, I'll send it. Boom, easy as that. And that is why I like Apple CarPlay. Some things to notice are just that this will override Bluetooth. When you have your phone paired to Bluetooth and you plug it in, it's going to look for Apple CarPlay. Um, don't know the actual reason, I just believe it's better and safer to use. Uh, there's more features than with Bluetooth. Bluetooth you can just stream your audio and call people like you normally could. This just gives it more of a you know modern look and you have your iPhone just straight on here. It's almost like just having an iPad now in your car because this is standing out from the dashboard and it looks like an Apple product. If you're using, if you like to use your phone and you're parked, you're not driving, I wouldn't recommend doing it while you're driving, but you can um, control some things from your phone and it will mirror it on the screen. So you can hit the phone button on your phone here and it'll pull it up on the screen there. If I close it out, it will go back to the main screen there. Uh, if I go to Audible, it'll pull it up on there. So there, are, whatever you can do on your phone that's on here as an app, you can do it from the phone as well. I would just recommend doing it from the screen. That way you don't get into the habit of doing it while you're driving. All right guys, let's recap. The pros of Apple CarPlay are that you can use voice activated controls and you can use Siri for your phone, messages, or your maps. Um, another pro is that the fact that you don't have to update your navigation. It will update automatically as you update your phone and the software. Um, another pro is gonna be that you will save tons of money, thousands of dollars, uh, by not getting navigation in a Honda. I'm not telling you not to get the one with navigation, I'm just saying if you're on a budget and you wanna get into an EXL, for example, which is what this is, you don't have to step up to the navigation and break your budget to do so. You can use Apple CarPlay to do that. A um, Couple of the downsides is that um, you know it doesn't utilize every app. So, for example, YouTube, Waze, uh, Google Maps, if you love those, uh, you're not gonna be able to use them just by plugging it in. You can jailbreak your phone and do a couple of things to get them on there, but I can't promise you that you won't break the car or break your phone uh, while doing it. Um, if you guys like the video, again, give me a thumbs up, comment down below uh, about some things that you like about Apple CarPlay, some videos you'd like to see me do in the future here. I'm gonna try to keep posting every week um, and then share this if you liked it and you know anybody who needs to know how to use Apple CarPlay. Thanks guys, we'll catch you on the next one.